guys, today I'm doing a quick tutorial on Nagios. And Nagios is a great way of monitoring your servers. So if you're a sysadmin, you most likely do not take care of just one system, right? Your uh, boss is probably giving you dozens or hundreds of computers to monitor and configure and maintain constantly. So having a system like Nagios in place will save yourself some time and embarrassment when a system goes down and you don't have to be notified by the end user or like the website's down or a service is down and they can't access a database. So this will notify you way before the end user gets a chance to tell you. So that way you can go ahead and troubleshoot it and be on the ball. So when your boss comes and asks you why the service is down, you already can say you're working on it, right? Which is thumbs up. But just keep watching and I'll show you how to set up non so you can be notified if any system, service, or some kind of system threshold has been limited, passed by either an email or text message, which is really great. And you can be notified day or night, you know, night when you're sleeping, but you'll be notified so you can go ahead and take care of that and be that wonderful employee your boss wants you to be. So just keep watching. And I am doing the commercial version, I know, I know. So if you want the free version, which requires a few more steps to install, just let me know, I've done that installation as well. And it's not that bad, but it does take a few more steps. So just let me know if you want that tutorial. So I'll go ahead and do that. So just keep watching and I'll show you how easy it is to set up Nagios in your environment and go ahead and set up those clients and set up your environment to just monitor a few systems to get you guys started. So just keep watching. First step is to go to the Nagios website, so www.nagios.com, and we'll go under product, and there's Nagios XI. This is the product we're going to download. It says download free trial, so let's go ahead and download that. If you skip down to the bottom, it says skip to download, so you don't have to register if you don't want to. And that's going to take us to this download page. There's a number of options that we can download off this site. If you're already familiar, already have some kind of hypervisor available, you could download a pre-configured virtual machine here. But I like doing it from the source code, that way I could install it on a machine that I have already configured to run Nagio. So it's a server I already set up. I already have a CentOS operating system pre-installed, ready to go for this installation. So I scroll down to the bottom and I'm going to download the source. So I'm going to go ahead and save that to my file system. And I'm doing this locally on the server that it's going to be installed on. So it's downloaded to my downloads folder in the account I logged in with. But I, to do the installation, you have to remove it to the slash temp directory. From there, I'm going to extract it using tar and unzip, GNU unzip, and we're going to extract all the files. It will be slash temp nagios xi. So from there, it's pretty easy. If you do a listing of the file system, you can see there is a full install. So it's as simple as running this full install. Make sure it is executable. If you extract it correctly, it should be. So you go ahead and do a slash dot, so current working directory, full installer. And it's going to take a few minutes to do this. It's going to run through a number of scripts. And if you notice, before, when I did the listing there, it had a number starting with 1 and down to, I think, 9. Those are scripts it's going to run in that order. And then you can do various things. So now it's compiling, it's downloading, it's installing. So if you have a basic CentOS, there is no pre-configured settings you have to do an addition to get this to work it's pretty straightforward you move it to the slash temp directory the source code you run the scripts and it's pretty much guaranteed to work I have never seen a problem doing this and once it's done it's going to start up a local Apache web server so now it gives you that URL right there that and if you go to that site on your local machine you notice it's the IP address I put up there but if you put localhost instead of the IP it would have worked as well and it's going to give you some information here. Be sure to write down that administrator password. You're going to need that in a minute. And then you're just going to run install. So it's a whole bunch of PHP scripts in the back end for Nagios running here. So if it's on the program URL, you should take a note of that as well. So we're going to go ahead and click install. And once that starts, it's going to finish the installation on the local machine. And it's giving you just a little heads up. Username, be sure to write that down, Nagios Admin, that's pretty standard, and the password. Now if we go to the login page, we're going to go ahead and type in that login information. So this is actually saved in the back as a HT password file in Apache. If you're familiar with Apache, you know what that is. That's where this uh, Nagios Admin password is saved as. Now let's go ahead and we're going to start installing the client right away. We clicked on that Configure tab on the top. I'm going to scroll down to Linux server. So I have another operating system 
that I already installed that I want to monitor. So this is going to be our client. So I'm going to have it running Red Hat. It's actually running CentOS, but this will work anyways. I'm going to give it the IP address. I'm going to hit Next. And this is a great wizard. It's super straightforward. It's going to download that client. Be sure to download that Linux agent right there download instructions as well if you need to. It has all the settings you want. So these are the time settings and the time intervals, the different services you want to monitor. Some of them require the client to be installed. Some of them don't like ping obviously does not require the client to be installed. But to find out the number of users and number of processes, you do need the client installed. Then you can check the percentages, different services you have running. So if it's a web server or a directory server, or mail server, you can go ahead and check those boxes and I'll start monitoring those servers in addition to the standard generic services it might start to monitor. And then you could also add service. The option to customize the services you are monitoring is also available. So you could go ahead and list the Linux processes to monitor and give it a display name. And then when you install the client on that host, it will start monitoring these additional processes or services. Now the final step is to the settings and how often your host should be monitored. So in normal circumstances, every five minutes, unless there's an issue, then it's every one minute. So go ahead and hit next if you're happy with these settings. If it's a more mission critical system, you can decrease that if you want, but if you do, just know it's putting a slightly more load on that host. Uh, it's just a slight difference. And once you're done, go ahead and click finish, and it's going to take you to the final step. It's going to run some scripts in the back end. Do not interrupt it on this step. It's actually very important to adding stuff to the database and it's running a number of scripts and creating different uh, Nagios core configuration files. Now once it's done you have to go ahead and install the client otherwise everything will just show under the system status of that client we just configured as pending. So it says pending here it's going to do five attempts if it fails it's actually going to uh, start changing the status to failed and not pending. Now we're going to go ahead and install the Linux agent on the machine we want monitored. We transferred over that Linux NRPE agent. We're going to extract it and uncompress it, unzip it with the tar command as seen here. Once we do that, we're going to run the installer. It's very simple to run. Same thing, you can run that dot slash full install just like we did with the Nagios download, the Nagios XI download. Same thing we're going to do with the client here. Once that's done, it just takes a few minutes. To do this, um, I believe you do need yum configured for this. So if you're using CentOS, it's not a problem. It's going to go ahead and use yum and download everything you need. If you're using Red Hat, you might need that Red Hat network subscription to get some of these packages to install. Now it's going to bring you to the end. It's going to ask the host, the Nagios XI server IP address. This is the allowed host to collect the information. Be sure you enter in the correct host. This technically could be a point of vulnerability. After a few minutes, you should go back to your Nagios XI website. If you look under the status of your host again, after installing the client, you notice everything has been updated and the information is being collected. Next, we're going to go ahead and run the same wizard under the configuration tab on the top. We're going to run this for a Windows machine. Same thing, it's very simple. We're going to go down to where it says Windows Server towards the bottom. And if you notice, there's a number of services that could be configured. I'm just doing some of the more common ones, but there's tons of wizards. And there's actually additional more wizards you can download because um, this is open source. Some of this is open source, so a lot of people contribute to this. So we can go ahead and put in the IP address of our Windows Server. And then if we hit Next, it's going to bring us to this next page where it asks some additional information. Notice this is where you're going to download your agent. Be sure you know if it's 32-bit or 64-bit environment. Download the appropriate agent, save it to the local machine, and we're going to transfer this to the host, to the local host. But in the Windows case, you will need a password. So there's some password requirements there. Um, only letters and numbers. I don't believe they include special characters. So it is upper and lower case. Be sure you record that. You're going to need that during your client install of the host you want to monitor. And again, similar to the Linux installation, there's a number of options and configuration settings for the services and processes running on the Windows machine that you could customize here. If you want to change these percentages around, it will affect when um, the machine will be flagged as a warning or failed service and when you might be notified. So if you don't want to be paged in the middle of the night, if your file system's at 95%, you might want to modify that here. 
Again, you can customize the processes to monitor and it's different services here. Um, there's additional documentation for this. I'm not going to go into this right now. But just know the option is here. So if you have a specific services running on your Windows machine you, and you want it monitored, it, it is a possible. And same thing, you can change your monitoring settings here every five minutes. And if there's an issue every one minute, go ahead and hit finish. And it's going to do the same configuration and run the same scripts and configure the same Nagios core backend files. These are actually manually configurable if you want to go in the backend and change it. So these will be staying pending for this host until we install that Windows client. So we download and transfer over this NS client plus plus Windows installer. We just run it. Very simple installation. Um, we're going to hit next. Make sure you put in the IP address of the host, the Nagios X. I host and make sure it's correct and here we're going to put in our password so I usually check the first three options there enable common check plugins enable NS client server and enable NRPE server so this usually gets all my services being monitored that I want I don't usually check the last two and then we hit next and once that's done, we can go ahead and run the installer. It just takes a second to finish. You can start up that service, or you can restart the machine, and that will start up the service as well. And we can go back to our Nagios XI server and check the status of this. It's very simple. It should be updating shortly. And here we are. Everything is stating that it's OK after we install that client. So if you ever see a machine fail, then you can check the status here. And you can look at your st uh, services status and system status. Um, go ahead and browse around. Here we see that our Linux server is down, our first install, but our Windows server is up. Thanks for watching guys. I hope this was helpful. I hope you guys set up a solution similar to this in your environment. It will save you guys tons of time and effort checking all your systems and embarrassment when someone's telling you your server is down because you don't want to be that guy. Alright, I'll see you guys later. Bye!